D'accord. Non, je vais vous envoyer les autres, les autres, les autres courriers. Et que tu as un midi. Merci bien. À bientôt seulement. Yes, Stefan. Yes. Oh, autour de l'audio tout. Stefan, où est-ce Okay. So slowly we are coming together in our Zoom room. Good morning, everybody. Good morning from Model to Practice. This is the Good Morning Stakeholder Forum from Leap for FNSSA. A warm welcome to all who joined us already. And we are getting more and more. Uh, we are now 19 uh, person from funding institutions. Uh, that's great. Today is the 15th of February, 2022. Uh, uh, 2020, 20, 20, 2022. So now I have it. <laughs> the future of the AU EU funders collaboration um, is our good morning issue here. Leap for FNSSA. For those who do not know, this stands for Long Term European African Partnership for Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. Um, this morning is our last morning of our uh, Good Morning Stakeholder Forum. Please um, get a coffee or a tea and let's move on. Let's move on means uh, uh, that we are today without the public who joins uh, the four good mornings from the 1st of February to the 10th of February. Today we are here only with uh, funding institutions. Um, we have uh, prepared today a round of discussion for you to talk about uh, the future of our, our collaboration. Um, my name is Stefan Hafner. I'm working for the German Aerospace Center, serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, and together with uh, Jackie Cardo from the Network of African Science Academies, uh, we will moderate uh, or we will frame this meeting here uh, today. And I hand over to you, dear Jackie, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Well, a very good morning to you as well. Uh, greetings from Nairobi, uh, the capital of Kenya. So I'm pleased that Stefan has said to co-host this event with him. First, we'd like you as our beloved funders to be part of our platform. Now you can do that by expressing your interest. And uh, I think uh, uh, our colleagues in Siham will share a link where we get expressions of interest for your inputs. And we want this to be an interactive discussion because we know the future of the platform depends on collaboration uh, uh, and partnership with you. So welcome and feel free to join the platform as well. You'll hear more about the platform as we go on. Uh, that's the link uh, for you to become a part of it. So uh, we are collecting expressions of interest from various institutions and individuals at this point in time. So you can get the link and I think we'll also put the link on our, our chat platform. Uh, we want this to be an interactive meeting. Uh, at some point, we'll be able to engage you to give us feedback on specific questions. We use a platform called the Mentimeter, uh, which you can access if you have a smartphone, you can scan the code, the QR code that is on your screen right now, or you can use the website but the easiest which CM has enabled us to be able to get your feedback on is using the chat, uh, the chat platform as well, the chat facility. So you'll be able to uh, click on the link and go directly to the questions as we move along. So that's our way of getting feedback from you, mainly through the chat. But then we also want to have a quick round of, of uh, introduction because we need to know who's joining us. So please, if you could type your name, your institution and your country in the chat uh, uh, facility right now, it would be good for us to know who's joining us today. And also enable us to network and uh, speak more directly when we get to uh, the other sessions of the program. So feel free to put your name, your institution and your country at this point in time. We'll give you a few minutes to do that because we know not everyone who registered to participate in an event actually does. 
So we'd like to know who's joined us today. Again, I think Stefan highlighted this is our fifth and last of our session of uh, webinars we've been hosting called the Good Morning Stakeholder Forum. And I think as we get to know your name, uh, I, I see Prudence has signed in. Thank you, Prudence. And other uh, participants, please do so. But we carry on with the program as we do so. Do not forget to put your name, institution, and country. Uh, Stefan, I think you take the floor now and give us a highlight of what our other five Good Morning sessions have been about. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie. Indeed, we are addressing the AU-EU region and somebody enjoys um, exercising here with a painting function from Zoom. So um, you're warmly welcome. Let's see, Arch uh, always have to have a space to happen. <laughs> so we are talking here about the AU-EU region, uh, 28, uh, 82 countries, 1.5 billion people. And we want to remind you what we are doing in Leap for FNSSA and what we discussed already in the uh, fire for uh, good morning sessions before from model this means we are coming from the program and innovation management cycle meta governance model first developed in leap agri and then we developed this further towards a long-term platforms process a succession of program cycles that's the model roughly to practice what does that mean um, we are working in two alliances which we initiated the West Africa EU Alliance, short WAIA, or the North Africa EU Alliance, NAIA. And we were working there with different working groups on certain documents which should feed into the future platform that we want. And so what is indeed the goal of um, our efforts here? The goal is, uh, to establish an AU-EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture from model to practice coming from the meta governance model and the platform's process form follows function which functions do we need and how do we form the platform this was uh, the question that we uh, we followed and um, looking just briefly again more in detail what we are intending we are intending to design an AU EU theory of change and impact pathway short TCIP uh, as an element of a long term monitoring and evaluation and learning process. We are also working in uh, a working group in the two mentioned regions as a pilot on a communication concept meant to become an AU-EU communication concept. And we are also thinking about how to coordinate the big diversity of actors in food systems. For that, we are addressing um, clustering uh, and the clustering process as a central uh, point, uh, as a central activity of uh, the future platform. We consider this as a polycentric cluster um, coordination element that has to be established in this uh, platform. Um, we also drafted a coordination hub um, to which should feed into this platform to coordinate the different uh, actors in the clusters. We, for that, designed 15 services uh, relevant in the program and innovation management cycle. There are four phases in the management cycle, and these uh, four phases have to be served with different activities. And these activities are meant to be provided by the platform in the frame of a knowledge management and communication framework. And for that, we are about to establish a funders consortium for the next step towards this platform. And that is what this meeting today here is about. We are uh, building together with you uh, the funders consortium for the next step of um, the partnership in FNSSA between the AU and the EU. So today's speaker, can we, excuse me, can we delete also these lines uh, uh, that have been painted here on the slide? That would be kind. Um, so the speakers and facilitators um, today are um, 
uh, Mr. Hamidou Tambura from Funrit Burkina Faso, Henning Kip Knipschild from the BLE Germany. Uh, Jackie and I introduced or uh, uh, have been introduced already, and Dr. Mokta Salami from Algeria. Um, Hamidou Tambura and Henny Knipschild um, will uh, moderate uh, today's session, which is framed from Leap for FNSSA, but this session um, is organized then from Leap Agri, and uh, Henning and uh, Hamidou are uh, moderating this session. We will have a presentation from Mokta Selami. I'm sorry here, the, uh, uh, the order was uh, a bit confused. So chances and challenges of joint funding within the AU-EU partnership will be the presentation from Mokta Selami. And uh, we then later will meet in uh, different working groups. We consider three working groups in which we will um, discuss different questions. I will not go into the details here. Um, Henning and Hamidou will uh, present these details. And after this breakout sessions, we will have certain questions uh, we would like to discuss and we want to have to, to share our answers um, with each other for the potential way ahead. And um, in that sense, I'm handing over uh, to Hamidou and Henning. Uh, please, uh, the floor is yours. And I have to stop sharing the screen for that. Thank you very much. Um, Hamidou, would you like to present yourself and then I'll, I'll follow up? Okay, thank you everybody. And uh, I'm very pleased to be back with you after a so long time and apologize for this uh, missing. So I'm Hamidou from uh, Fonrit, National Funding Agency from Burkina Faso. And uh, as uh, Stefan and uh, Ending said, we are co leaders for uh, Work Package 6, is it, uh, Ending? Yes. Yeah, so that's it. Um, here yeah, for how long? Stefan? 2015? Yes, I think so. So I'm here yet. That is it. Henning. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Henning Knipschild. I work for the Federal Office for Agriculture and Food in Germany. Uh, we manage research funds and I will now start with my presentation and share the screen to show some of our thoughts here um, with regards to setting up an FNSSA platform, with regards to following up on uh, the funders networks. So. Um, what we would like to start off, we would like to present to you uh, two flagships of the AU EU partnership. Some of the colleagues who are uh, with us today are part of this, are part of both flagships. Some of the colleagues are in other initiatives within the AU EU partnership. So um, we have arrived. These, where we are today, we have arrived actually because we've gone through many partnerships, as Hamidou just said. We've been uh, part of many projects where we brought together partners from Africa and Europe. And the ongoing projects which we have at the moment, that's the Leap Agri Funders Network, which is uh, a long term EU Africa research and innovation partnership. We have 30 partners. 24 ministries. Uh, the project runs from 2016 to this year. We had a joint transnational and a centralized call. Uh, we had a call secretariat with, with a joint call based on our roadmap, the FNSSA roadmap. Uh, we had a co-funding actually uh, of national and EC funds, and we launched research projects in FNSSA. The topics, as I said, were based on, on a roadmap, 
which may be familiar to you. And uh, we actually try to integrate all the projects we, we, we fund by um, formulation of theories of change and impact pathway for each project as a basis for a joint TCIP. We, uh, we based this actually on a concept by WNWO. This, sorry, the, sorry, this, the, the, the program corrected the spelling here, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so actually uh, this has been going on for quite some time. We have another project, the Leap for FNSSA project, which is also uh, aiming at the long term EU AU partnership for FFNSA. It was launched in 2018 and will be ended this year. And the objective is to set up a platform, uh, which we call International Research Consortium for FNSSA. And we also support the AH, HLPD, which is a high level panel. Um, another, uh, let's say, initiative, another group with a mandate is the FNSSA Working Group. Some of us who are here today are part of this working group, which has been actually installed to support the HLPD of the EU-AU partnership in FNSSA. Um, so where are we now? What comes next? Leap Agri and Leap for FNSSA will end in 2022. Uh, some of the funders sustain the partnership, for example, in the FOSS era net. Some of the colleagues, I think, from BLE are also here, which work at FOSS. But in all the future of the funders partnership within the AU EU partnership is uncertain. So we think uh, we should now actually launch the discussion on how to go on with our partnership, how to integrate more partners. And the questions are, what are the options and experiences for collaboration? And what are our expectations? Which institutions can and are prepared to mobilize funds for future AU EU funders collaboration? So these questions are the topic of this workshop and we want to discuss it with you and we want to discuss with you how we can attract more funders. Um, now there are different scenarios for funders. One is the coordination through coordinated funding. The funders could pool funds to pay for research, pool in-kind resources, pool funds for activities accompanying research, uh, pool funds for exchange and travel of researchers, of students, of other actors. On the other hand, uh, funders could also contribute to the coordination through dialogue and exchange. So more, more, let's say, on the platform. Funders can jointly work on a research platform. Uh, funders can coordinate services for research systems, jointly use knowledge management and information systems, build their work on joint M&E, and collaborate to meet joint objectives. So we have these two options, which we see, and which are kind of put in place also within the frame of the two projects, which I have mentioned, Leap Agri and Leap for FNSSA. Now there are different options to pool the resources. What we had in the ERANET uh, calls, we had a joint centralized call. We have a harmonization of national funding regulations and eligibilities, harmonization of different fiscal years and availability of funds, which was quite a topic we had in the EU-AU partnership. We had a call secretariat, which worked very well, but has its cost. Uh, we all developed concepts to reduce risks through dependencies and joint responsibilities. So what you see here, a bit is uh, you have a central call, you have the national funders who are actually linked to their own research at national level. And then the researchers, they form consortia. And from the central uh, call secretariat, you try to reach out to, to the other actors, farmers, NGOs, and private sector. Um, 
The challenge is really, as I said, high coordination costs, which uh, usually come from maybe uh, EC or international organization. We can discuss this. And there's a risk in harmonization of agendas and national funds. Um, one could, of course, also look at other concepts which we sometimes have are between fewer national funders. You just build a research alliances on a platform. You have a few funders which come together, um, which are maybe the more active partners in a research consortium. They build small alliances with multi-actor approach. They integrate researchers, they integrate private sector, farmers, NGO, and then they just organize the research based on the tools they have. So they don't have an extra tool. And this, of course, is uh, more flexible, but the outreach is different. Um, and it facilitates a lot the pooling of in-kind resources. So you could imagine different of these alliances on a platform. Uh, the problem is, of course, always uh, the partner identification and the building of the consortia and the alignment of the agendas within the consortia and with other consortia and to organize joint knowledge management, capacity development and M&E. So what are the challenges? Uh, normally you have research and innovation projects which are more or less well funded and you want to provide an input to change. And this is of course not always easy, especially because the funds available to integrate the actors who are supposed to uh, actually put in place the change is not always available. And this is often due to the fact that the research funds are often only eligible for national research. Research funds often cannot be used to fund innovators in value chains, and research funds can often not be used to sufficiently uh, fund knowledge management and capacity development. So what you have, you have a very intensive flow of funds between the funders and the researchers, and you always have reporting and feedback, but the outreach to meet the objective to the private sector, the farmers, the NGOs, the governmental organizations and the researchers is difficult. Although this is of course the justification to invest uh, into research and uh, to invest into the objectives, for example, to improve rural livelihoods, production and capacities, to contribute to SDG 2, to SDG 13 and so on. So, we actually have to set up this link, and that's why we have developed different concepts in LEAP for FNSSA, but also in LEAP Agri. Um, so now, how could this be in the future? Uh, we could imagine to have joint research on a research platform. We could have joint agenda setting, involve actors from practice to actually uh, find out what are the priorities for research, build the agenda on demand of actors and jointly develop a research and innovation agenda. Uh, we could also go for a joint launch of research by building alliances of multi-actors, including funders, this was a very interesting point which came out of the workshops before, which said the funders should see themselves much more as part of the research. Um, and the alliances could jointly organize the research. Then we see very often that joint knowledge management is a very big challenge. The building of thematic networks and clusters with similar approaches, joint information management, joint preparation of outreach. And the last component is how can we put as a research platform, put the research into practice within the logic of a joint theory of change and impact pathway. As we actually try to prepare this in Leap Agri, where I said we built on the concepts on the NWO. So we're planning actually to have, or we're aiming at a joint impl implementation of feedback loops, sorry, from practice to research. 
So if we go into these topics now, how can we put this in place? And we would like to have your feedback on these mechanisms in this workshop. So if I come back to this topic, joint agenda setting, involve the actors, build an agenda, joint development of a research and innovation agenda. How can we address the challenge? That's the column on the right. So what we're trying to do is build a multi-actor platform. We have uh, made quite some, put quite some work in developing uh, a research and innovation agenda, uh, a joint theory of change and impact pathway with sub-regional actors. Up to now, we've been working with uh, actors from Western Africa and Northern Africa to, to actually see how this approach works. And uh, we have developed a scheme to develop a joint again agenda. So how do you build the research out of this? So the idea is to build alliances of multi-actors, including funders, to build the research. So we need actually to build partnerships between actors from funding, research, practice, and knowledge management who jointly organize research projects. How do we tackle the joint knowledge management? What we've started, we've started mapping thematic groupings and clusters. We have got a pretty good uh, project database now in LEAP for FNSSA. We're trying to link knowledge managers within collaboration to serve the research system. Where uh, we, we, what we need now is we need a, a joint knowledge management system and uh, joint rules to foresee knowledge management, capacity development, and scaling up in the projects. We had a small component of scaling up in Leap Agri, but we didn't really manage to put this in place. So here you see the challenges. Um, and the last challenge we always meet is how do you actually uh, link up the research outputs to practice. And uh, the platform actually proposes to link knowledge managers within the collaborations to serve the research system to do this job. The question, of course, to funders, very briefly, it's the same tables again, it's just the column three. Can funders fund these activities? Or which are the funders? Who are the funders we actually have to mobilize to provide these funds? Because many um, of the funders um, who are working in the funders networks, as we said, have funds which are eligible to merely fund the research and not so much the accompanying measures. So who can fund the joint gender setting? Who can actually uh, fund joint knowledge management, who can fund the link between research and practice. The question with uh, the last topic is, do you set this link up uh, with an emphasis on a link within the research projects or on the platform? So this is the situation we have. We have got quite some experience. Um, but now we're here with Leap Agri. Uh, this, this approach we took requires quite some funds for coordination. Um, it does not uh, feature up to now a proper research and innovation platform, uh, but it has jointly launched research. It's uh, Leap Agri a bit lacks partners from innovation and practice and lacks knowledge management services. Leap FNSSA is the other way around. It has actually featured all these topics which I was mentioning, but has not sufficiently attracted funders. And there's no active research on that platform up to this point. And we now have to discuss whether it makes sense to actually bring these components together. So what we have to see now, we normally had foreseen to have breakout sessions, which I think is still valuable, uh, where we discuss questions, which I will actually inform you about in a second. 
Um, this means after this session, uh, we will be actually uh, sent by the system, by the virtual system here, by the Zoom into different groups. And the groups can discuss different questions. We have uh, facilitators for the groups. Group one is Jackie Cado. Group two is me, Henning Knipschild. And group three is Stefan Hafner. We're around uh, 25 uh, participants now. So we have nice small groups to discuss. The first group discusses the questions, what are the options for mobilizing financial resources for AU, EU programs on FNSSA? So with the emphasis on research, how can we actually mobilize the funds? We have the governmental funds, we have different actors who uh, work with crowdfunding, microfinance, loans, innovation funds, and so on. So we actually, um, should discuss the options of pooling uh, funds from uh, mobilized financial resources and how we see the options. If the group says, okay, we're national funders, governmental funds, the emphasis should be there. Uh, if there are issues involving uh, um, private funders, please also discuss these topics. Group two, much more goes for the question, what would be the ideal approach for a program? Is it better to have a centralized program uh, like we know from Aeronets with a virtual common pot where you have uh, a call secretariat which has to be funded? Or is it better the other approach which I uh, demonstrated on the other side of the extremes, let's say, having a platform with, uh, we called it polycentric smaller funding schemes, where just a few actors, a few funders, a few researchers, a few uh, actors from innovation, just form groups, alliances to organize their research with, with their normal tools, or are there actually other ways between meeting these two, let's say, extremes. Group three discusses if we have joint research, which should be accompanied by the features of a research platform, the knowledge management, capacity development, outreach, integration of actors from innovation. What are the options available for funding an AU-EU platform? So the coordination infrastructure for example, through accompanying measures. Uh, so, so please discuss this issue. What is feasible there? Um, after this, we will go to more questions, which I will present to you later. So, so these are the questions we will discuss in plenary with, um, with the Mentimeter technology, where you have actually the possibility to, to just to post your opinions. We, would, we will ask you, okay, which of the institutions do you think would be interested to join? Um, are there options to mobilize the funds? What are the sources of funding? Which mode of pooling funds would you prefer? What are other options to go on? Uh, would you position joint funding into the frame of an R&I platform? Uh, how can we such a, fund such a platform? But we will discuss this at a later stage. So at this point, um, I thank you very much. We will now go to the groups and we will have uh, 45 minutes to discuss this. Um, I, I have a look into the chat whether there were any questions but I don't see anything at the moment, but we have sufficient time to discuss our points of view and our questions from now on. So welcome to this workshop. Thanks a lot that you're here. This is now the end of my presentation. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Henning. Let me just come in with regard to the breakout groups. Colleagues, all please contribute in this uh, breakout sessions. You can use also the chat, which makes it um, a bit uh, easier for the facilitators to list all the contributions that are made in the breakout sessions. Then we can copy paste them into a slide, but you will see this in a minute. So once we are um, allocated to the three working groups, uh, we can continue. The colleagues from Siam, Bari. Should we start with the subgroups now? Yes, please. Yes, please. So you will now actually be pushed into a group. Tutti gli altri stai menando così. No. Devono scegliere loro. No, devono entrare. È automatico. Ma perché non sta funzionando? Chi è morto?
type something in the chat, and I can post this uh, here in this PowerPoint presentation so that I have stuff in the presentation mode. Um, and we collect some ideas about how to fund a platform coordination infrastructure. Please believe.
Welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome, George. How are you? Oh, very fine, Karu. Very fine. How about you? Very fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good. Before to start, just a little bit that all people are back in the plenary session. Okay. I think that we are all 24 persons now. Okay. okay. So the floor is your uh, ending. Thank you very much. So what I propose now is that we uh, that the rapporteurs quickly wrap up what are the outcomes of the groups. And then um, having a look on the agenda, I saw that we actually over jumped Mokhtar's presentation. So I just asked him and he he would be he would offer now to give his presentation after the wrap-ups of the rapporteurs. So this is fine. This is very good. It doesn't really do any harm. So maybe uh, we start with group one to see a bit what are the outcomes of the discussions. Would that be okay? Yes. Yes, it will be okay. Great. Okay, but the question I have for Gaetano, do I have sharing rights in the plenary? Because the, I have the slides on my machine. But you are allowed to share your screen when you want. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll do that pretty quick. Um, Henning, you give me five minutes for that or how many minutes? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, let's see. Our group one was looking at question one as uh, Henning had indicated. Uh, let me see if it works. I don't know why it's not getting to presentation mode. Yeah, there. So we're looking at the question of what are the options for mobilizing financial resources for AUEU programs for research and innovation uh, on food nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. And as an indicative um, point of discussion from uh, the question was that we had options like uh, government funds, crowdfunding and microfinance options. Now, uh, maybe upfront I say uh, my group members did not uh, see crowdfunding or had not had knew about crowdfunding but did not have experience in it. Uh, so we, we discarded that as an option. Uh, and then secondly, for microfinance and loans, I think uh, one of the group members said it's a risky venture, but something that can be looked at when you're looking at innovation. So we managed to come up with exactly 14 options that I think would be worth reporting back. One is the fact that for each national government, they have funding that is drawn from taxpayers' money from the uh, public coffers that is used to directly fund national research projects. Uh, and then also they can use that same funding to support international projects. Uh, essentially it's research that would benefit the country and therefore the emphasis uh, on why the national uh, funding can be utilized to be able to support research in that end. So direct funding was one option. Uh, another option we presented was that the national research funding can also make public calls for research. And this also uh, relates to the first one, only that with the second option, it's not an open call by government or ministries, but it is a specific research funding institute that does the call on behalf of the ministries so that it collects uh, research calls from, I mean, research projects that will be funded from the public. And then third was the private funding through usually matching funds where the collaboration is done between the private sector 
and research institution, and it is mainly done for innovative innovation projects. Uh, the private sector involvement, usually there's an inclination for making profits. So that's why we thought that maybe the private funding is, would be mainly suitable for innovative innovation pro pro projects. Then uh, also as a funding option was tax refund scheme or tax rebate that you get when uh, government is interested in a certain research. So their contribution is given in terms of uh, giving tax waivers to the research institution for those projects. And mostly when tax is involved, then it is research that is done at, inter at national level not and not international level. Then we also had an option where non-EU members, I think I had members from Turkey, and I can't remember the other one, uh, the other nationality we had, who uh, as non-EU members, they make a contribution towards uh, EU supported programs, and therefore they're able to uh, get international funding research by supporting that. So get the research in their country supported through the EU framework because there are associated countries with the EU, so that type of contribution. Then <clears throat> uh, something that we discussed that seems to be overlooked most of the time when I'm talking about research is international philanthropic foundations. And those are either from the US or from the UK, uh, from Germany also, I think we discussed, we gave examples, uh, the Ford Foundation, Wellcome Trust, both Volkswagen Foundation as well, as well as the UIT Foundation. Uh, simply is applying for grants to be able to undertake, undertake research. And that also is done, uh, I think, mostly with research institution in a collaborative manner. And I think previously it's been used as a way to fund African uh, PhD uh, training uh, schemes. So that's also one way is trying to source for funding from philanthropic foundations. Seven is when the local ministry partner uh, uh, with research institutions in a sense that ministry, let's say of agriculture partners with ministry for uh, innovation or research and technology to be able to uh, undertake local research. And that also will be done through a local institution. Then there's the avenue of pooling funding. And this, we had a specific example from CSR where they have institutes, I think they say they have about 13 institutes, and from their own projects, they pay back 15% to the headquarters, the CSR headquarters, and through that, they're able to have a pool of funding to directly fund, especially early career researchers, and they charge that at 15% for the institute, and it's only done on indirect uh, costs, and that happens when they also have to go out and uh, uh, source for project funding as well. The UN agencies, I think sometimes is overlooked, but it's also a funding uh, way, a way of securing funding for research and innovation, especially research and development, with examples from funding from WHO, FAO, uh, and UCTAD, as some of the examples given. The loans and microfinance option, uh, I think, as I indicated earlier, was seen as one that would be uh, a risky one, but, skew, but skewed towards technolo technological and innovative research. Uh, but it has to be, uh, it is an ideal scenario. It is not an ideal scenario for funding research because of the risk involved and the guarantees for uh, research dividends once it's done is also low. So it's an option that I think was presented as one that would be pursued mainly by the private sector. Uh, especially when there are specific innovations that they're looking to uh, introduce into the marketplace. And then uh, loans was interesting because this, uh, I think we had the example of government concessionary loans, which is secured from the World Bank as an example. And these are loans that institutions get to uh, mostly do technology transfers. And I think the national governments get the loans from the World Bank as an example. Uh, we also discussed the African Centers of Excellence, which is a scheme by the World Bank, also giving concessionary, concessionary loans to national governments to be able to do uh, undertake long-term research. And, and I think we also had in that discussion, you'd get concession of about 10 years, and then after that, the repayment uh, interest rates and periods are also very, uh, um, what do you say, uh, favorable. 
And then, uh, so that's with the World Bank and also the African Development uh, Bank also does that. Uh, and, and I think the African Development Bank scheme is what uh, we mentioned as rural, rural enterprise program. And the last option is in-kind contribution, but we realize that for this to be viable, then the in-kind contribution has to be quanti quantified in monetary terms so that it's able to be leveraged to be able to get financial resources for research. So I stop there and thank you very much to my colleagues and team that uh, helped me put up the list of options. So we have 14 so far, thank you. Let me stop sharing. So that's thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jackie. You're welcome. I will uh, share my screen now to present to you what we came up to in the in the second group. So uh, what we discussed, actually, we, we saw the two, uh, let's say, extremes, centralized program, which where we have lots of experience and more let's say on the other side more polycentric smaller funding schemes with few actors um but the discussion actually went along these lines that we we came up with our experiences and uh what we said is uh also is that there are quite a number of available mechanisms at ec level that can support activities but a clear vision has to be developed and that uh, we have our networks and from there we have to actually group the agencies again to, to form a new network, a new platform. We, we talked about the examples and experience, for example, in Prima, uh, it was said that there are very interesting groupings which can be led to larger partnerships that we have FOST with centralized calls, but it's very EU focused. We have LIPRI, uh, where we have internal and external calls. Uh, mm, and these institutions who contribute funds are encouraged through top up. So this top up mechanism is always uh, pretty much emphasized to, to actually motivate funders. Um, there was a discussion about the fact uh, how to involve African partners. There was a problem of budget, but uh, it was emphasized that it is really important, even if budget is not available, to not exclude partners. This may also be on the European side. Um, so the contributions to a network should not always be of monetary nature. So there should be some work done on that side. Uh, uh, Maria emphasized that there was Pro Intense Africa, a project which has discussed many of these uh, approaches, but uh, about six years before, uh, and there was also a problem going on with partnership because there was a commitment by funders lacking to build up the platform. So we are very much in that situation now. Um, so the idea is actually to provide a wide platform for various topics, actors and funding instruments. That was a very interesting uh, thing which Maria said um, uh, and other actors with regards to the fact that we're trying to build an FNSSA platform, but it's always difficult to integrate the different actors at the EU, AU level and the, that we're tending to live in our project silos, which are not so much interacting. And it was also said that uh, if we are going to the question, is it better to have a centralized program uh, with a maybe virtual common pot and smaller polycentric funding schemes, that it would be good to have a mix of both, to have a local design of subgroups uh, that should be integrated. And uh, the reason which was given is that Centralized programs such as Leap Agri are good for pooling funds, but very complicated, and that it should be the objective to build something more lightweight and flexible, to have a mechanism where decisions can swiftly be taken 
uh, so that you have within an instrument subgroups that have the mandate to quickly take decisions and that not all the partners have to be involved. Um, it was said that the joint agenda, the theory of change and impact pathway should integrate all these big topics like innovation, which is a big topic at European level, climate, energy, and to build the platform of all actors. So uh, if you want to integrate the different funds and logistics, uh, you have that should have that bigger vision for a platform and also, of course, envisage to work with EU and AU. Um, it was said that often there's a secretariat needed. This was also the question was with ERA Africa, where the commitment was lacking. Actually, when it was planned to sustain ERA Africa for the future. So you always normally need a core group or a secretariat, which uh, provides in-kind funds, or you need some glue money normally from outside to, to facilitate this. Uh, it was also said that if you have a platform with too many topics, that this might frighten off funders because they have their specific objectives. Uh, it was said that uh, then this could be addressed by um, having, let's say, different calls for research, have one year on FNSSA, one year on energy, one year maybe mixing topics like FNSSA and energy and climate. So the funders can always jump in once they have funds which they can provide. Uh, it was stated that of course the error nets will not be available, but there are tools available. Uh, uh, the partnerships which are available at EU level are mm, more tackling the European agendas, but uh, mm, that EU and AU are very interested in a functional platform for to meet the objectives of African and European partners. So uh, uh, such a EU AU partnership a platform should facilitate integration of various topics, as I said, from health over energy, climate, and FNSSA to integrate more funders to. Uh, so it was emphasized that FNSSA is a pilot of a very important topic, but that actually the aim is to see how, how from this FNSSA pilot, we can actually uh, develop uh, a vision for a more holistic approach and to jump out of these project silos and the, the, where the barriers must be broken up. And that this platform must build on the HLPD agenda and uh, that one very important priority, which is now uh, more and more coming up is innovation and shall be linked to thematic topics. Also to actually boost a bit applied research to tackle the challenges and to provide input to change. Um, it was said that in-kind contribution is not really well defined. This was said by other uh, partners that there are Henning, your slides are not moving. Sorry for interrupting you, but your slides are not moving here on my side, at least. Um, am I on a slide which says platform necessary for overall EU partnership? No, you are on slide three in my display. Yeah, I'm not sure whether you are moving them. I moved actually to four, five now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I couldn't see that. I don't know how about the others but go ahead then if it doesn't work thanks no we can't see them either and then uh you're on you're not on presentation mode this is strange because i was i presenting my slide all the time we just saw slide the, number the three one. all the time now it works First one only yes Okay, so I'll try to go to five again. The discussion, the last point we had is on in-kind uh, contribution. Uh, some contributors said that it was not really well defined. Uh, it was also said that partnerships, they facilitate diverse pillars and also in-kind contributions, but that the geometry of the partnerships is 
very complicated and must be well understood. And that the recommendation actually for the funders here is to develop a perspective and to emphasize that we are aiming at an instrument between EU and AU. Um, so, so have our objectives clear and, uh, and then identify a tool and not try and understand uh, complicated tools, which may be not apt to fit to our objectives. So this is more or less what the discussion went into. I think it was very interesting, this discussion to, to broaden the platform, to be more flexible, to have tools that you can take decisions quickly and swiftly and to come away a bit from, from these very complicated mechanisms. So thank you. So, Stefan, please. Thank you very much. And I hope that you all can see one slide. We only have one slide for working group number three. Do you see this slide? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So we heard now from the first two groups about potential sources of funding and also how to fund a program. Group three was dedicated to the questions, which are the options, which could be the options available for funding a coordination infrastructure. So this is very much addressing the long-term perspective of the platform, which uh, should be based on a coordination or which, which should be on from the operational side uh, being supported by a coordination infrastructure. And in our team, and thanks a lot uh, for the contributors, we have been a very small team of, of five person. Um, the, the example of a transatlantic platform came up and uh, the example of the Belmont Forum and both are in the field of public funding active. And this is, uh, they both are organized in a, in a centralized governance uh, structure. And they do not have, for example, a long-term central secretariat, um, so which is uh, a coordination infrastructure in our sense here. They only organize um, this their activities in, in temporary programs um, with uh, in-kind contributions from uh, the partners and, and these platforms, uh, they came up because they, uh, we, we might uh, uh, be able to learn from them or the other way around they from us. Um, there are multiple groups in the platform and um, they require some coordination of their activities. But again, this is their more organized uh, with in-kind contributions. There is, a membership fee in the case of the Belmont Forum. And this could be one option uh, for us, for the AUEU platform coordination infrastructure for the platform as a, uh, as a whole to raise membership fees, uh, to run very basic uh, coordination activities and infrastructure elements. Um, the um, Option, for example, there also could be, but again, more on a temporary basis, that uh, monitoring, evaluation and learning activities, but also um, in the field of knowledge management and communication, that this could be provided in kind, but only on the temporary uh, basis. And, and this points already to a problem. Indeed, with a funding program, a temporary funding program, um, you could also fund the, the infrastructure, but this then is from the perspective of the infrastructure, not a long-term perspective, but a temporary perspective. And um, there might be solutions, and in those both mentioned um, networks, the Transatlantic Platform and Development Forum, they are their activities are mainly based on in-kind contributions and the membership fees are only used for the meetings of the funders as far as we are informed. Um, 
which in kind contributions and um, it's it's remarkable that uh, this has been mentioned already by the other working groups which infrastructural in kind contributions are possible this could be physical space for events but also hosting digital platforms and again the question is uh, is that only possible on a short term uh, or also for the long term um, the question of private actors uh, uh, has private investors has been raised uh, as well. We, they could be uh, addressed with this. And uh, we described already in the Lead for FNSSA project different services uh, in a program cycle which are required. It's a question whether we could address private investors uh, to um, invest into these services. And again, as I already mentioned, it is um, a challenge to distinguish uh, between funding a short term program. This is what we did in the past. We were jumping, jumping from one project to the next. And we again and again um, agreed on different in kind contribution, uh, but we did not invest in a long term infrastructure, which includes a long term mechanism. Um, of the collaboration on knowledge management and communication and so on and so forth. So we have to distinguish between that, what is a short term investment in a, in a program and even if a program cycle would last 10 years, uh, this would be seen as a short term investment. The long term investment for a succession of program cycles uh, remains an, an open question. And um, we finally came, and this is the conclusion from our group three, um, uh, we came to that point that in fact, we on the one hand need a smart coordination of in-kind contributions. And this is very much along with what has been said already. Uh, we have to quantify in-kind contributions so that um, it is very clear in which period of time, which in-kind contribution uh, could be given so that um, a network of partners can build on it. But we also have to see that um, the, the reason for uh, building the African Union and the European Union uh, is to build on a subsidiarity principle. And what uh, both commissions did, or in this case, the European Commission did to invest into CSAs one after another, um, the, the reason for that is indeed that we are lacking of a long-term coordination infrastructure for this partnership. So we, we, we can discuss it back and forth, uh, what remains, and this is a result from working group two, uh, we would need a long-term investment from the African Union Commission and the European Commission into a coordination infrastructure. And if it is, the instrument of a CSA, which is an, a European instrument, stands for coordination and support activity, then so be it. It is a continuous uh, investment in these uh, CSAs, a uh, succession of CSAs, uh, for ensuring a long-term coordination infrastructure. And this long-term aspect is addressing very much not the management of a program cycle, but the maintenance of a knowledge management and communication framework, the maintenance of monitoring, evaluation, and learning processes, including how to uh, deliver then the data uh, from these processes. Um, thank you, and back to you, Henning. Thank you very much. So I think we came up with very interesting inputs. And I'd like to now ask uh, our colleague Mokhtar to maybe give his presentation because he will give us a few inputs in his presentation which actually build on our discussion which we had now. Would that be fine with you, Mokhtar? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I will try to be brief. I see we are a little bit late. Yes, but please take your time. Thank you. Um, 
I'm sharing my screen. I hope it works. Yeah, it's going. Okay. Okay, I have faced the right one because I introduced small modification. Let's uh, say that's uh, this code. Please, Mr. Yeah. Mokhtar, uh, put in uh, presentation mode. Thank you. Presentation mode, yes. Is it coming? Not yet. Activate. But... I think it took some time. Hmm. I don't know something. Let's try again. Mokta, if you like, I can also present your slides. I have your okay, slides. Thank you. Shall okay. I do that? Yes, please. Okay, wonderful. Let me just find it here. So there it is. Wonderful. Okay, could you okay. please uh, stop sharing your screen, Mokta, and then I can yes. uh, jump in. Okay, I did. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And here's Tar's file. And in the presentation mode. And please, Mokhtar, let me know okay. when I should uh, move your slides, please. Okay, okay, thank you. Then uh, let's say that this contribution is a form of uh, advocacy for the emergence of a community of partners by uh, threatening the parties involved in African Union, European Union project, but also uh, looking the expression of interest of uh, some many of the uh, agri partners. Uh, since more than 80% are in favor of sustaining the partnership. Uh, my observation is that since years, we have witnessed the birth, but also the death of many Iranians, and surely you were involved in some of them. The idea is to discuss how to move from a group of funding agencies to a sustainable community of interest, of business, offering social benefits and which can make an important contribution to Agenda 2063, 2030, uh, and so on, by reducing poverty and by providing the means of livelihoods and access to goods and services and contribute, contributing to sustainable economic growth. This vision includes uh, actors from a wider ecosystem, such as academics and research institutes, uh, investors, uh, service society, and so on. Then I would, I would like to start with a reminder of the uh, main stage of the uh, European and uh, African partnership and its prospects to arrive at the vision of a committee, community of interest for the long term already defined the DPIMC uh, for LEAP for FNSA. 
uh, let's say uh, that uh, the Benny program of partnership was uh, were developed in RINEA projects. RINEA stands for Research and Innovation Network Europe Africa, where we had the opportunity to define for the HLPD a set of programs. Uh, some of them are well known, like uh, I've say, like uh, climate change, sustainable energy. But we also developed uh, during Green Air other projects for partnership, like Earth observation, transport in Africa, and so on. Uh, so uh, the main ideas were also to strengthen the quality and the quantity of partnership by defining mechanisms. Uh, and so on. Uh, you know many of this, uh, this, uh, this aspects, and uh, supporting and urging formal and informal process of the regional STTI policy dialogue, uh, what we call strategic priori, uh, priority settings, uh, which were uh, developed during 2016 for the FNSSA during 2017 for climate change and sustainable energy, but uh, also for uh, the, the Europe developing uh, with the clinical share partnership, which was a program specially uh, dedicated for uh, sub-Saharan countries. Next slide, uh, please. Uh, let's say that I want to summarize the state of play of the African-European partnership now. Uh, by recalling that in June 2020, the HFPD plenary uh, on science, technology, and innovation, and during July 2020, also the first African EU research and innovation ministry meeting agreed on four thematic priority for future bilateral cooperation. Public health with 417 joint projects, green transition with 311 joint projects, innovation with 10 projects, and capacity for science for three projects. These uh, priorities are also part of the African uh, European Union Research and Innovation Program developed in uh, Horizon Europe. And uh, one component is the global approach for research and innovation that aims to deliver new solution for the four thematic domain, domain also reflects the Africa initiative launched in June 2021 as part of Horizon, uh, Horizon Europe. For the African uh, Union, we have still three main agenda which are running and which are, are of high priority. Agenda 2036, CISA, of course, and CISA, CISA uh, for Continental Education Strategy for Africa. All these projects are to mix as priority for especially uh, future actions. Next slide, please, uh, Stefan. Uh, I came to what the event we are living now, uh, which is uh, focusing uh, especially on the approach of uh, African Union, European Union uh, strategy in innovation. Uh, the process of consultation uh, is running. And uh, this slide just summarizes the difference the different program uh, which are running uh, or, or which are to encourage. Next slide, please. Uh, I came to, 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 to this slide, uh, which is uh, under, under discussion. Uh, it was first introduced, uh, the, uh, to be introduced during the SOM, the last SOM, and uh, yesterday, activities uh, were launched for opening consultation. How, uh, as member of uh, working group, how did we arrive to this conclusion? Of, of course, we, uh, to define future orientation of research, especially on innovation, and, uh, the, always in the partnership Africa-Europe, we had a look to previous and ongoing research and innovation activities. Some results and lessons learned 
of the African Europe Innovation Partnership Pilot Project, some opinion of the African Union European Union Advisory Group on Research and Innovation, some discussion that took place at the African uh, Union European Union Research and Innovation Ministerial uh, meeting during uh, June and July 2020. But also, it's very important to, uh, to say that this mapping was also built on partnership already developed in FNSSA, as well as the progress of research and innovation partnership on climate change and sustainable energy. I mean, I mean that we give priority for the future call to integrate and to see how uh, population, how researchers, how teams who were involved with the project or for some projects which are of technology development, by example, and to reach uh, the, the, the TRL level four or five, how to go to the, the, the level seven and eight until the commercialization. Uh, it, it means that there is a future a future for all action, for all projects developed in the past. And then uh, what I mentioned that uh, yesterday was launched the process of consultation and identification formulation of course for proposal and project is, uh, to, to support uh, for the future call. And uh, probably during uh, 2013, during the first uh, trimester, the first period, uh, there will be the approval of the African Union, European Union Innovation Agenda. And of course, during the second, uh, the second African uh, Union, European Union Research and Innovation Ministerial meeting, uh, there will be the launch, the launch of, uh, of projects. That's to say, uh, I can share with you, but it's it's public. But uh, if you don't have the link, I can share with you the platform, the new platform dedicated to this aspect: how to register, how to to identify a partner, and also there is a questionnaire uh, for all uh, community uh, to see how they uh, could be involved and how could they could improve the documents. Uh, already defined the, the, then in the European African Strategy for Innovation. Next slide, please, Stefan. Coming to Lip Agni, I, I would like to mention only one, one important thing. Lip Agni, for me as, as professor, as, as researchers, as African partners, I see that there are 250 African and European teams of research from 20 nations. What I can say, my personal observation uh, is that to now for many projects, and maybe I'm wrong, but including uh, Lipre Renewable Energy or Lipagri, we have a set of agencies. We have partners working together, but, but we don't have a community. We don't have a community. Uh, when I mean community, I mean a partnership of individual resources, a partnership between uh, institution with memorandum of understanding, with conversion of cooperation and so on, and to, to move from partners to community where we can undertake action, define problem and include mobility. Um, I, I was uh, a little bit, how to say, uh, disturbed when I see, when I saw that, for example, some African researchers were questioning uh, before the COVID, for a mobility, for example, to move and to visit uh, European laboratory and they don't succeed because European partners don't agree on this. But more uh, complicated was, was that, uh, of course, it's reported in, in, in the survey we did. Uh, it was reported that some African institution invited 
uh, European partners to care for difference and to explain process and the, 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 they, did not, the, the, they did not travel. Uh, just to say that the idea is to make, to include some humanity in our, in our contacts and then to move to another kind of partnership. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, I took I took this uh, the, this uh, this uh, this pictures from a work we already uh, did in Pillar One. Uh, sorry, sorry, we already did in uh, in Deliverable Six uh, Point One. Uh, with the uh, IRD, where we identified that there is there are 37, 70, 150, 75 African and European publication in FNSSA. It means that there is already a beginning of contribution. Uh, in the map, we, you can see the African cluster of research and of publication with South Africa, which uh, are the more visible, Nigeria, Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, uh, and so on. Uh, sorry if I don't give all the name. But you can see when you, you see France, Belgium, uh, Switzerland, the Netherlands, uh, the, et cetera, it's researchers, it, it shows researchers from France who are participating in African papers. Uh, this, uh, this picture show for us that France is more engaged as co-publication, as co-authors in African publications, and the same thing for other for, for other for, for other partners. But it shows that there is uh, there are links, there are links in publication in publication and uh, of course the idea is uh, to move to uh, a community the other pictures they are showed how are evolved uh, teams from uh, from, from uh, in the deep in deep uh, in deep agri uh, nairobi uh, pretoria amsterdam are more present than uh, uh, brussels lisbon and so on that's just uh, that next slide please then uh, I want to focus mainly on this ID. And uh, we see here in the right, uh, the, uh, the map of Africa with the links between uh, all countries and uh, uh, all, uh, all, all partners from Europe and Africa. And uh, coming back uh, otherwise to the mapping of scientific publication, I, uh, we, we can see more details, by example, of CIRAD uh, and the connection uh, this institution have with other ones. Uh, I spoke about uh, the CIRAD, but the same thing for many, for all other what we can call knots. And what we can see is that you have uh, for European side, uh, if I mention CIRAD, you have many links with the ERD, with other universities, but when you go to the red zone, uh, those links really are not visible. When you take Cairo University, when you take uh, other universities, there are no links. It means that this community is not really in contact with, with, with other communities. We can see this in the next slides. Uh, then uh, uh, at the labs, you can see, for example, European community, which with researchers linked and so on. And in red, that's the African community of researchers. And, there are no uh, many, 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 many uh, relation between institution and between uh, researchers. Uh, it means that we are not really engaged in a poor, in a, in a power uh, network. And the idea is 
to go and to move toward the creation of a community. Uh, I mentioned that there is a need to consider the stakeholder perspective and their involvement in the community uh, engagement initiative. Uh, there are many approaches we developed in computer science, like multi agile system, etc. But the idea is, is here we can't make uh, an algorithm to, to push people to, to connect together, but we have to facilitate the mobility, to facilitate the funding, uh, uh, the contribution, the access to, to research platform, etc. Et and the idea is really to create a community of persons and not only uh, of uh, uh, formal institutions. Uh, last and I think last slide, uh, next slide and the last one. Uh, uh, what I mentioned that generally after the project is completed successfully, all assignments of the project resource are closed. Uh, what, that's what we find in many in many in many projects and i gave the, the example of uh, air africa where it was mentioned that some partners uh, they there were a race for going to new projects without concluding the previous program and to think about the impact of the program the experience of research and development in Lipagri needs more attention. A positive aspect to consider is the creation of an inclusive, inclusive business community to address challenges, create appropriate solutions, and innovate in a systematic way. To be effective, there are some conditions to set up, like motivation and building trust among the partners. The, the word trust is very important. It came often in all uh, uh, in our consultation. How do we get there? And I came back to, to the theory of change proposed in LIP for FNSA. I think that's a big model to deepen and to, how, how to, how to say, uh, to analyze more and to convince partners that's really for developing a, a long-term partnership. We have to work on a model. Uh, that's the program and university management cycle, which is a strategic for me and the systematic model that describes uh, exactly how efficient uh, investment into research and innovation, including capacity building, uh, can be uh, undertaken to, uh, to, to, to foster, to threaten our community. Uh, I want to, to conclude by this, uh, this uh, few lines that the next step should be either a prior agreement between all the funding agencies to create a single fund fed by the funding agencies. This fund could be managed by an independent body, a foundation, or an academy which uh, will distribute the budget to the research teams according to their contribution to the program and no longer according to their nationality and so on. Uh, a reconnection to the proposed way of institutionalizing the PIMC could be made. Thank you for your attention. That's my last slide. Stefan, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And indeed, Henning has the floor. Thank you, Mokhtar, for your presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think this was actually uh, let's say a good mistake we made to have your presentation now after our discussions because you actually uh, mentioned quite a lot of ideas which came up in the discussions also. I, I very much appreciate this way at, uh, which we had looking at the links between institutions to actually have a mapping of who actually links up with which part of the world, with which part of the institutions, and the emphasis on the fact that uh, we have to link up people. Thank you very much. Mm. Any questions, please, to Mokhtar? Please raise your hands.
if you have questions or comments, also comments. Is there anybody? Oh, Maria. Maria. Yes, Please. thank you. Thank you very much, Mokta, for your presentation. Uh, it's it's very important to see the, the, the co-publications and also the evolution, because I think um, you've mentioned the total, the total amount of co-publications between 2010 and 2020. However, I think it will be important to see the evolution per year since um, much efforts are, are being implemented um, from the countries in order to, to have joint um, projects and, and programs. So, um, and, and this is important to see how also in the co publications, there's a mention on the funds received in order to produce uh, these co publications. So, um, the web of knowledge um, has also this possibility, and I think it will be important to, to, to see um, in which programs or funds um, they have been uh, co-public, uh, pub, um, those co-publications have been produced. So thank you very much for your presentation. And I also add in the chat, because it's more common than um, it's related uh, with with um, uh, the, the, the the historical um, reasons for um, for having uh, those co-publications, and I would also raise uh, the importance of having another um, um, co-publication platforms. Um, uh, revised be because the web of knowledge, uh, in the web of knowledge, there's a lack on co-publications on social science and humanities. And uh, there are um, many, uh, as you know, uh, social science and humanities is a scientific area where um, you do not need uh, much um, let's say research labs and, and and infra research infrastructures. Um, therefore, I think it might be important also to look at these uh, co-publications platforms in order to see uh, how um, social science and humanities have been uh, a target uh, scientific area on those. Um, yeah, uh, and this is much related also the, 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 the figures that you've showed with with the research institutes uh, from Europe and Africa that have connections uh, and, and historical connections also. So, and, and based on language um, also. Um, of course, uh, I don't know if you are aware, but uh, the African Observatory on STI has also some, some very important um, uh, figures on, on these co publications. Um, so uh, that could be also um, taking into account. Thank you very much, uh, Mokta, for your presentation. Thank you, Maya, for your comments. Thank you very much. Any other inputs, comments, ideas? Okay, maybe we should then just uh, jump to the next agenda item. We have prepared some... Hey. Yes, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, we have prepared some Mentimeter questions for you, which can be discussed while we're filling them out. So what we have here is you will receive the link to a web platform where you can actually give your opinion. You can just type them in or uh, you will be led by actually by, by the website. And um, we can get a bit feedback from you, which of course today is not that difficult because we're not so many people. We had the good morning sessions before where we had uh, a big number of participants. Um, here you see in the screen already the link. 
you can maybe just click on it. It's also in the chat. So if you go to the chat, you can copy the link. It's from the Menticom tool and then go on the website. And uh, from there, I think you will be led to the next question, right? Yes, and you only have to click on the link, Henning, so there's no need to copy paste or so it's very comfortable. Yeah, thanks. Okay. So one of the first questions is very general. And of course, you cannot commit funds at the moment. But the question is really whether you think in general, depending on all the circumstances, that your institution would be interested to in, in joint funding of EU, AU research and innovation programs. This looks pretty positive. And this is very interesting because we had this feedback also from, uh, from our Leap Agri partners. And uh, the interest is very high, but uh, we are lacking the tools at the moment, or maybe the, the clear concepts, or we're developing them. Any more feedback? So does that mean the others say no? <laughs> Did all the others find the link? Maybe it would be good to see just if you go to this Mentimeter question to see whether all of the 21 participants really saw link and know how to use it because we will have more questions coming in now the link is uh, copy and pasted in the chat so just click on the link okay maybe we try the next question then um now the question is about actually, um, it is about the logistics of mobilizing fund, funds for transnational research. Of course, we're not asking you for a specific call now, but do you think that in general, you can uh, mobilize funds for transnational call? There's a no. Of course, we would be very interested to, to, to hear what are the reasons, because this is what is often here. Uh, George actually uh, added a comment here. Um, a question to Siham. Is everybody able to speak technically seen? Because, of course, uh, the colleagues could also just raise their voice and say what they think. Yeah. They only have to unmute the microphone, but they are able to, to join to the discussion when they want. Okay, so George, if you want to actually put forward what you wrote into the chat, that would be interesting. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I thought I should explain that um, we can say, yes, African institutions can, um, jointly co-fund um, Africa, Europe research and innovation programs. However, it all depends on the conditions under which um, we, we, we join. If, for example, you compulsorily have to put funds in, into the, the program and such funds are at a level which you cannot afford, definitely you will not be able to join. However, if, um, for example, you are jointly co-funding and uh, co-funding comes with an arrangement where your in-kind contributions are recognized, you can yes. easily join. So we need to be alert to the various conditions that may enable African institutions to join in co-funding um, our joint uh, research programs. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I think this is one of the really essential topics. Thank you. So are we still moving here? Okay, let's go to the next question, please. Um, so let's imagine you would tr we would promote uh, a mode of funding and we have different modes. For example, uh, do you think it makes sense to go for a mode where the majority of funds come from national funding or of international institutions? Or would you rather say, okay, uh, we always need acquisition of funds from EC or similar, like for example, in the Aeronet scheme, we need some, as it was called, glue money to keep us together and to have incentives for national funders. And uh, the third one is involvement of private sector and foundations. So um, please select an option which you think is the, the primary. And then you can actually rank it. You can rank it. Does it work with you to rank it? Okay, this is interesting. Uh, this would also be for, uh, for us, it is always pretty interesting to, to understand whether um, national funders actually uh welcome the involvement of private sector or whether it mingles with national governmental priorities any more feedback we're 21 people in the room here Have you all had a chance to, uh, to understand how the website works? If not, please just raise your voice and tell us. We're not so many people in the room. Exactly, colleagues, indeed, come on. We could do better, we are 21. Just click on the link in the chat and give your feedback. These are non-binding contributions that you are giving here. We just try to find out all together what could be our way ahead. So what is the platform that we want is, is, is looking. And therefore, please, 21 person, give your feedback. Click on the Mentimeter link in the chat, and then we will have a bit clearer picture in which direction we could continue. Okay, maybe we should go to the next question then. So which mode of pooling funds would you prefer? So this is actually one of the things we discussed. Is it uh, centralized calls along an AUEU theory of change and impact pathways with the call secretariat? or smaller funding schemes or other. So this is actually the topic we had in the, in the second working group very much. In our working group, we very much had the outcome, which was all fine as well, to have both on the platform, which is, of course, if you think this is uh, important, you can also just Actually, turn on your microphone now and say this. Okay. So there's still quite a lot of colleagues going to the for the centralized call. Of course, we don't have the feedback from everyone now. But it's, yeah, it's interesting. 
Let us jump to the next question then, please. So, if you just clicked other, or you were also thinking, okay, there are other options to work together. What are these other options? Please just feel free to tap your inspirations to see what you think. So what are your ideas? Any ideas? This is also important to mention, Henning, that indeed this is all anonymous. So please yes. feel free to contribute here. We do not see who is contributing here. It's just about getting uh, all our ideas together here. Please. Yes. We will not go back to institutions and said, Mr. Hafner just committed a few million. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Any other ideas? Okay, this seems to be a difficult one. Let's go to the next question then. Wait, there's something coming up. Look. Hmm, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Any other? Ah, let's go to the next one then. Hmm, melting pot system. I'd like to be interested to hear, I am interested to hear what that is. Let more time, the people uh, need to, to talk to about this, yeah. Yes, yeah, maybe you're right. Private foundations, international banks, centers of excellence should be explored. Also UN collaboration, FAO and UNESCO. Yes, I think you're right. There are lots of funds around and it's, well, we are very much concentrated on our national funds. Any other ideas? So how does the melting pot function? I read this as a mixture of just public and private uh, mm. funds in a virtual or real common pot or something like that. But perhaps the person who wrote that might want to specify in another contribution here. Uh, Henning, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, what I find strange in uh, when we study the publication, the co-publication between Europe and, 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 and let's say a scientific uh, publication in Africa, uh, is that, for example, uh, Europe uh, participates at 40% of scientific publication. But uh, many of co-publication are with China are with USA, are with uh, with Japan and so on. It means that the researchers have they have access, or it means probably that there is another source of funding. And to now, uh, of course, uh, uh, we are just focusing on African European funding institutions. I mean uh, that probably uh, other partners from other countries, I don't know, India, China, et cetera, could be interested in participating to, 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 to such partnership, partnership, I don't know. But let's say for me, the most visible contribution is pro, uh, in European African, uh, in African partnership, scientific partnership, 
is is Europe. But mm. we have to to see also if it is it's possible to mobilize other partners. Some gives the example of uh, Medinda and uh, Foundation Bill Gates and so on. But other solution could exist. Mm. Thank you very much. I am also very interested in the, this topic uh, about integrating, uh, let's say, contacts with China. That's an interesting point. Are there any uh, opinions about this? Because of course, uh, this is a very tricky question and there are lots of collaborations going on with China, of course, between Europe and China and between Africa and China. Any, any opinions to this or remarks? Please just put on your micro because I cannot always see your hand if you have a comment here. Okay, perhaps Stefan. If, yeah, perhaps if I may come in with that question. I mean, at the end, uh, we should understand our life here as a life on this planet and we have to work together. So uh, food systems are interlinked like uh, climate, everything is interlinked, uh, is linked here on this planet. So I appreciate this as a, as a vision uh, that we create here a platform which finally will be linked with all actors worldwide. On the other hand, I see, for example, here today, um, we do not have that much funders here in this meeting, which is a bit surprising because we are addressing 82 member states uh, in the AUEU region. So it seems to be very difficult to get the funders on a table just to discuss and to, to broaden this then to other institutions um, and, and to other countries like China, which is a very uh, special player. I would say this is at the moment um, a bit too early because we are referring here to the AU EU region and the relationships between the 82 member states. Um, as a vision, I would agree with you, Henning. Yes, uh, the, uh, China plays a role, but also other countries uh, should play finally a role. But for now, I would say it's too early. Let's build this platform. Let's uh, run a program cycle successfully. And then uh, we could think about um, expanding uh, the group of funders and also the group of actors for that. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. Back to you, Henning. Thank you very much. Any other views or shall we go on? Ah, yeah, Jan, Jan is there. Jan, please. Okay, now you should be able to hear me. <clears throat> yes. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you for a very, very interesting session. Unfortunately, I have to leave you in a few minutes because I have to host another meeting and I need a couple of minutes to prepare. Um, just to follow up the last thing that Stefan said about the uh, limited number of uh, donors participating in the meeting, uh, I think it might be uh, due to several factors. One of the things is that there are so many things going on in parallel this week, the EU Africa week. Uh, the other thing is that maybe it was not um, advertised enough. In fact, hadn't it been for the uh, fact that uh, it was announced in the last uh, Leap Agri meeting that we had last week, I must uh, confess that I wouldn't have participated myself because I, I wasn't aware of it. So I, I think it, we need uh, or you need uh, as the coordinators of, uh, of this group to spend a bit of time to get it, uh, get the message outside the immediate uh, group that has been part of the uh, FNSSA. Uh, also, uh, and expand it also to 
Um, not only member countries in Europe, uh, two of the donors here are, for instance, associated members, uh, Norway and Turkey. So uh, do not forget us who are part of it. Maybe one should uh, try to reach out on the European side to what used to be part of uh, the ESFIC group, the Science Forum for International Cooperation that uh, was, um, was uh, terminated now at the, into 2022, and that, which is probably going to be replaced by something else that we do not know about. But some of us were part of, uh, Maria is here, uh, part of the African Working Group that was uh, part of the ESFIC. And that was a very good forum to exchange this type of ideas. So that's what I wanted to say. And I'm sorry that I have to leave in a couple of minutes or so. Thank you very much. Perhaps briefly before Jan is leaving indeed. Um, Jan, I must say we, we, we sent via email only over 2,500 messages out of which over 400 addresses were uh, from funders in the AU and in the EU region from these networks. It were way more than 400 even. So, uh, and it, it has been published on websites, Twitter, Facebook. And so I think we indeed uh, made use of all our options that we have uh, to address the funders. So just to uh, come to the right interpretation of this situation, I don't believe that the promotion of this event is, is really a factor, but this is also my personal assumption. Thank you. Sorry that I missed it. I've been sleeping. Sorry, <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> no, but Jan is of course right that, that we may not have reached the people and we have to maybe make another effort. George, please. Thank you very much, Annie. And uh, I just uh, want to specifically address the issue you raised with um, engagement of China. And um, the first point I want to make is that China is very important um, as far as looking at the African landscape of uh, research and innovation is concerned. China currently is concerned about spreading its uh, geopolitical influence. And for that matter, it is looking at Africa, it is investing heavily in Africa, human resource developments um, in the science, technology, and innovation uh, domain. And so we get a lot of um, uh, postgraduate uh, students going to China now to um, study for PhDs and what have you. Um, also, there have been some Chinese involvement in some research and innovation activities. Um, however, I think I would like to agree with Stefan that if we really want to form a cluster of um, uh, funders, we may not want to pull in China immediately and um, it's mainly because China has its own focus and it will be, or I, I wouldn't say will, it may be um, difficult to get them in. In fact, already we are having difficulties pulling in um, funders to come and uh, join us uh, and, and cluster them um, for the purposes of funding Africa, Europe, um, research and innovation programs. So we may have to concentrate with those that we are familiar with. And then hopefully if we are able to do the hard work of um, engaging them and sufficiently opening their eyes to the strategic interests that they can see in joining our kind of uh, platform, um, we'll be able to succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other inputs here? Uh, 
Okay. Maria That's... raised her hand, Henning. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry, Thank I you. didn't see it. Yes, Please. raised already by Jan. Um, much of us are involved in the Africa EU week uh, this week, and um, it might be had an impact on the participation of uh, most of the countries here in, in this uh, session. Um, however, I think it will be important to raise the question of commitment. Huh? So, um, and, and the lack of existing commitment uh, by, by, by countries. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, this is a, a very important issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'd like to add on to that, maybe after this Mentimeter session, how to actually attract the commitment. I think it's our kernel question. Thank you. Yes, please. Let's go on to the next question. Um, so it's now about the question if let's envisage a future joint funding. Um, would you rather think it's practical just to have it? Well, it's not just, it's a big logistic to have it in the frame as we had it in Libagri, as we have it in the era nets. Uh, you have a joint call, you go for it, and at some stage it finishes. Or do you think it is necessary to uh, invest more uh, concepts, more resources, um attract more partners to set up a, a joint research and innovation platform for the eu au partnership and to place actually the joint funding in such a frame so and maybe it's very much also what you think is feasible or practical um we can discuss it as you know we're we're a few people, so we can actually click the button now, but then also give the arguments for our decision. So please give your feedback here. I think the problem we have is that we've all actually been dreaming of a platform where the exchange is uh, facilitated, where also especially the exchange between research and the and the practitioners is facilitated. Uh, so I think this is also one of the kernels of our discussions. Please, some more some more feedback, please. Perhaps while the colleagues are uh, making their decisions here to give their feedback, um, uh, allow me to comment uh, on that, Henning, please. Yes, please. Um, so jo joint funding. Uh, the, the more partners we have, uh, the more diversity uh, we will have in such processes, which is good, which is very good. And again, we are mentioning continuously, we are talking here about a region of 82 uh, countries. And these 82 countries have uh, different meeting points. One meeting point is the senior officials meeting in the frame of the AU EU high level policy dialogue. And in, in this moment, and, and um, some of us here participated in those meetings, some of us even were involved in the preparation of these meetings, again, 82 member states. Um, this is very uh, challenging, it's complex, and these are the meeting points of the public funders. And uh, we are mainly driven by public funders so far, and yes, we have to find opportunities to include uh, private investors in a more meaningful way. But these meetings of these public funders are really um, 
an, each meeting is an angle point in a decision-making process uh, towards funding research and innovation. In that sense, this platform that uh, we are envisaging here, that we are creating by contributing to this Mentimeter and contributing to Leap for FNSSA, um, should definitely, from my personal perspective, uh, include funding in the frame of the platform. And in that way, that funding could be coordinated more efficiently than we did it in the past. Each of the funders um, have a lot of work to do and partly they do not have time indeed to meet and to discuss uh, in detail how and when uh, to continue the multilateral investments. And that is the reason why we need in this platform certain elements and services to be provided in a platform's infrastructure so that the, for the funders it is more easy to meet, to discuss, and to make uh, relevant decisions. Because uh, it is assumed that there are many synergies in these multilateral collaborations that we can use. For that, we have to have a platform where the funders can meet. Thank you. And back to you, Henning. Thank you very much. Other ideas? Please just raise your voice if you if you want to say something because I cannot always see the hands here while I'm sharing the. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not even sharing it, uh, but I cannot see the hands always. Okay, let's go on to the next question, please. So the next question is, uh, if we want the platform, the question we had before, how can it be funded? Can it be funded by bluntly saying, taking out a percentage out of the national funds? Do we have to look for uh, funding schemes that uh, let's say uh, international funding schemes or whatever that specifically provide funds for innovation, for knowledge management, for capacity development. So if we see ourselves here as mainly funders for research, is it from your point of view, from your experience, is it possible to, to use our national funds? There were also the discussion, um, the, the point that in some funders networks, you have a fee which can be paid. So is it that these funding agencies, do you think, for example, your funding agency uh, could provide uh, funds or in-kind services to fuel such a platform? And this is not really clear for me. If it says funders, funding agencies, does it mean that, um, that for example, BLE as a funding agency would look for another agency which specifically funds uh, research platforms or would research funders themselves be able to fund a platform? Here you have it, AUC and EC in the subsidiary role for 82 member states should invest in a learn and flexible, in a lean and flexible long-term coordination infrastructure. Part of the funds coming from the funding agencies on the platform should fund the platform activities. So we have the two different sides to the coin here. Thank you. Maybe we could even um, 
extend the question on the platform, on the funding modes, because of course we also have uh, representatives from FARA here because FARA does these jobs also. Here it says that even the private sector can fund and sustain the platform idea based also on an AUE concept for in-kind contributions. That's interesting. To have an in have a concept on in-kind contributions. This is very much also what, what George highlighted, the fact that these in-kind contributions should very much uh, be elaborated. If I may, um, I yes, contributed please. that as a, which was a part of the summary of group number three. And um, in fact, writing such a concept, which would be an additional challenge, but a good idea, I would say, uh, this would mean that we link uh, the required services in a program cycle, at least in one program cycle, um, to uh, potential roles, so, so sub work packages or so that can be offered so that uh, we can quantify in-kind contributions. One example is organizing, um, uh, for example, if it is a call for a proposal to which funders will decide, um, organizing um, this, uh, the development of such an agreement which a call for a proposal is so you need before uh, a lot of investments into this agreement uh, what could be a common call for a proposal up to uh, the funding decision of the funders however they will put the funds into this process this could be one service process which um, a ministry, a program, uh, uh, um, uh, a project management agency, or uh, uh, a science council could provide, which, by the way, would be a very big in-kind contribution because this is very time-consuming. But we have to define this somewhere. And for that, indeed, I uh, support this uh, idea of uh, having a concept for in-kind contributions to calculate uh, the needs of a platform. Thank you, back to you, Annie. Thank you very much. Linking the benefits of project to private relevant companies which lead them to finance the platform. Very difficult question. Different pillars funded by different sources, funding agencies, private sector donors. That's a good one. Well, they're all good, but that's one which appeals to me. So this would mean one had to identify uh, the incentives of the different agencies to provide their funds to the platform. Okay. Colleagues, you may also uh, give your comments because we can now actually uh, start a discussion around these topics. Perhaps I have another uh, point again, Henning. Um, yes. I, I mentioned this a bit before already. Um, we as funders, those who are here in this meeting, uh, have a say in uh, what is discussed in the AUEU HLPD senior officials meeting. So each of us who is involved in this high level policy dialogue uh, should address this issue uh, of the need of a long term coordination infrastructure. Thank you and back to you. Um, thank you very much. Does everybody see actually how they could provide the input to the HLPD? Or is it very, let's say, theoretic? 
Could you please repeat the question, Henning? Because I didn't get. Thank you. Ah, uh, so so for me is for example, uh, we we have uh, we have partners sitting here, funders who have got a direct link to the ministries and or they are part of ministries and the ministries are have a have a very good connection to the HLPD. Then there are under other institutions who um, don't really understand uh, the communication channels of the HLPD. And so my question is actually, if Stefan says uh, institutions, the funders should actually uh, communicate to the HLPD that we require for our collaboration a platform, um, is it clear to everybody how this can be done? Or, or has this to be facilitated? Because this was always the question for me, whether here the communication channels are clear to everybody. Okay. I'm sometimes I'm not sure whether the the institutions are so well linked to the ministries that are uh, then provide their feedback to the to the HLPD. This is indeed the point, if I may again, Henning. So uh, this is very much also a political question. So are the ministries who are in the senior official meetings are they informed or not? And partly it is in our hands here. Uh, partly it's difficult for a project management agency indeed to come through uh, with that regard. But we have some uh, in the network of funders who are representatives of the ministry and partly are in the senior official meeting, even in the, in the bureau of the HLPD. So indeed it is a longer and a complex process to bring this issue into the discussion of the senior officials meetings because their uh, decisions are uh, will be made which are relevant uh, towards this platform. And uh, the first step I must say was in 2016 where um, the AU EU HLPD roadmap on FNSSA has been adopted. And what, the, again, this is my personal perspective is lacking now um, we, we are missing there um, uh, a, a clear investment into the development of this platform. Just this CSA here was a, was a good step in the right direction. The question is whether following CSA would be the right uh, step in the right direction. My personal opinion is yes, this is the right uh, uh, direction, but this is still not, it does not contain the element of, uh, of sustainability and, and the long-term perspective. This requires another uh, dialogue on this level and a decision to be made to invest on a long-term, on a reliable uh, basis uh, into a platform. Thank you. Back to you, Henning. Thank you. And the question is whether... Uh whether well, such a development is uh, a long-term development, which should be accompanied by, a, let's say intermediate partnerships, because uh, we have identified now the situation that on one side, we think it is necessary to have a platform. It is necessary to go on and build our partnerships in the EU AU frame. There's no uh, clear instrument identified up to now, which can be, let's say, um, uh, addressed to have a short, short term view for, let's say, the next year, already an opportunity to sustain our, our partnership. So uh, the question where we are actually is where we started out in the beginning of this workshop uh, what are the next steps that can be taken um, 
what are the networks that should be maybe more uh, more intensively addressed? We have uh, we have here uh, the discussion about we have the networks Libag, we, we have Lib for FNSSA, we have uh, Libri, we have FOSS, and so on. So the question is really now: uh, Shall we involve all these networks to see how we get on, or is that not really concrete enough? And uh, should we set up a small group of of, of partners who just uh, start uh, building um, an initiative and, and and see how what happens? So for me, this situation is not clear at all. Uh, Maria is actually putting in a point which is absolutely clear. Uh, the commitment can only uh, be actually provided if it comes from a higher level in the hierarchy. So partners have to go, funders, funding managers have to go to the ministries and make an acquisition of funds. This is clear. But still, for me, it's difficult to see what are the next steps, which also could be facilitated. Good. Um, Henning, I suggest, I'm not sure whether you have some issues that you want to address. Um, uh, please, what, what are your plans? I didn't understand. Well, in, indeed, to come to the last segment of, of our meeting. So I suggest that we now um, just share um, the, some of the uh, takeaways here from the plenary and uh, then come to an end of this uh, meeting here. As you see, I'm already uh, sharing here the screen, but I see also George has George raised is, uh, his hand. Please. Yes, George has raised his hand. And please don't forget that uh, uh, we're talking about GMT. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much, um, Henning. And um, I just wanted to make a contribution to the point you raised about how to proceed and whether it is possible to even think of um, coming up with a program in the manner of a combination of lip agri, um, lip for FS, SSE and uh, FASI. And I thought that, uh, yes, we may be able to think about that kind of program. However, probably for the best results, we may think of that program in the manner of a coordination and a support action, um, which would virtually mean that we are getting uh, funding from one source and uh, the conditionalities, if I may tell them that um, for participating, uh, it's not as stringent as we may describe it in uh, some other programs. And so, um, if it is possible, let's be thinking along those lines. So I thought I should raise this point. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, George, for that. And I see also Maria's hand being raised. Maria, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you, George. Yes, this, this meeting is, is very important in order to, to shape, shape uh, the, the possible platform that and I think it will be our, our uh, job here um, is to, to shape and to, to, to try to find the best way and solution for, um, for, for launching this platform. However, uh, at the end, after we will shape the, the form of the platform, we could, um, uh, I think we should ask uh, all, all the countries um, from Europe and Africa on the commitment to this platform. Eh? So um, the steps that I see is, is this kind of steps. So 
having several discussions between uh, us, us, the, the ones that you invited, in order to shape the platform. And, and then to ask at the end a, a final, a final uh, the commitment by, by the funders or the, the countries or the ministries. Huh? So mm. this is the, the way I see it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. George, which which are the steps you would normally uh, see for your proposal? Right, thanks for asking a pointed question. Uh, the other steps I would think we need to take is about the engagement of the potential participants. Um, African institutions, for example, I believe by now we know those that may be strategic for us to bring onto the platform, we can engage them um, mm. and ensure that uh, they, 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 they commit to the platform that we want to build. And uh, we can say the same of the um, European institutions. Um, I believe that um, one of the things we, we should do um, after this, this um, session is not to be disappointed in the non-participation of the funders. Mm. I believe that it all, we, we, we should be rather encouraged to engage them more. Um, Yes, I can agree with uh, Stefan that um, there had been sufficient communication that should have brought them to uh, should have brought them into this session. However, it had not happened, but we should not um, exactly. give up on them. We should go after them and engage them, and then let them see the benefits or the mutual benefits um, of their coming onto our platform. And so th that's what I think we should be doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George, indeed. And that's, uh, yeah, for your encouraging works. We, uh, we should uh, continue uh, with our efforts, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So um, for me, the question is now, which I want to ask here openly. Uh, do, normally, you wanted to go on, Stefan, right? Um, well, I uh, have the impression that we don't have much uh, to discuss now. You, okay. We can continue. Yes, you're right. We still have would have some time. But um, if uh, the colleagues here don't want to discuss further, it would be also fine. Therefore, um, I posted here this slide already. So we could perhaps just... Um, wrap up here in a way uh, for this meeting. We will, Jackie and I will close then later the session. So please go on, Henning. Well, yes, it's just because we're together here just to allow for the question whether there, um, whether anybody here with us here would like to, to maybe address a different topic and uh, or highlights specific points, but this is more or less your takeaways, but we can still always go on discussing on that one. Just maybe we go for the spontaneous takeaways. And if we have discussions building on that, that's fine. If not, we can just stop, right? So maybe you go for the, for the spontaneous takeaways from today's discussion, Stefan. Yeah, thank you. So colleagues, please, um, as uh, George already came in and, and Maria here, please, would you like to share some uh, last statements for today? This is indeed uh, not the end of the process. We are right in the middle towards the platform. Um, what is your impression of this meeting today and what are your takeaways? Well, I've already spoken, but I'd like to bring out the fact that if we go back to the slides we shared, I mean, the slides that came up 
came out of their group discussions, you realize that there is so much information that we were able to generate in our various uh, uh, sessions. And it would be good if we can put all this together so that it will guide us in bringing out a report that would um, urge us in the right direction concerning what we want to do by, by building a, a, a platform uh, that would we can take into the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. And I see Aise from Tubitak, Turkey, raised her hand. Please, Aise, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I believe that uh, this meeting has been very fruitful uh, for us and also for the future of this uh, partnership. Uh, and uh, I want to say that uh, we would like to be a part of uh, the future process also in terms of uh, African-European uh, Union uh, partnership. Uh, so that's all uh, to say uh, from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much Great. for this. Excellent. Um, and um, indeed, uh, all the colleagues who are still here with us, uh, please be reminded uh, we are working in different working groups in the two pilot regions, uh, the West Africa EU Alliance and the North Africa EU Alliance. We are about now uh, in our last month of the project um, to design an, an appropriate approach to move on based on what has been expressed, how a platform should be designed that we want. Um, so please uh, stay in contact with us uh, and contribute. So you'll find the uh, contacts on our website and I will come later to that. Um, and I do not see any hand here anymore. So I suggest uh, that we move on uh, also Jackie, who is here, I hope I cannot see this now. Um, we uh, first of all want to, to thank all uh, the participants who uh, came to the Good Morning Stakeholder Forum, who uh, joined us in each of the five mornings. It's a big thank you to you. That's uh, very encouraging, I would say, for us all uh, that we uh, develop this platform together and that you joined this process. We had several hundreds of participants. That was great. But also a big thanks uh, to all the speakers, to the facilitators and the organizers. Um, uh, a special thanks uh, to our team in Ciambari, Gaetano and Carlo, who did their best. Carlo is waving there. Thanks a lot, uh, very much uh, for um organizing the registration for organizing here uh the zoom meetings and everything that was necessary your flexibility in uh changing uh, some settings because we learned during these five mornings and changes had to be made you reacted very flexible constructive and right in time to that so thanks a lot for you um without you we couldn't have organized these meetings so uh therefore an applause for you. <laughs> um, this was the last good morning. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, what else is important now? A, um, stay tuned with us. And who did not do this already, please become a part of it via expressing your interest to join the platform. This is not a binding interest that you express there. It's just to see... Uh, for uh, all the people involved, uh, how relevant this work here is towards the platform and that Leap for FNSSA will hand over to uh, the future process. Um, furthermore, it is important that you please uh, join the Leap for FNSSA uh, D group. And I would like to ask uh, the Ciambari team also to post uh, this uh, address also in the chat so that uh, the colleagues here can copy it, but you will also find this address again in the presentation slides, which we will share after this meeting uh, on the website, on the website for this meeting here. Um, in that sense, Jackie, I'm not sure whether you are here. Um, again, a big thanks to all 
Uh, we hope very much to see you again, to have further good mornings with you, uh, good days and good years ahead uh, to establish this platform. Uh, we will organize um, between April and June a follow-up meeting for funders um very soon we will invite to this meeting this will be in the hands of our colleague from funrit hamidu tambura uh, who is also here with us so uh, please expect an invitation uh, to a further virtual workshop between april and june as a follow-up to this meeting here uh, and in that sense thank you and i hope to see you soon again i do not hear jackie Perhaps she's not um, in the meeting. Um, I have to stop now here the slides. I have been reminded because it was necessary that we want to have uh, a, a family photo. So I stop here sharing the screen and I'm asking you all uh, who remained in the meeting to activate your video so that we can see each other. That's great. Good to see many of you. Please, maybe it's Florence. Fatih and Rose and Sumia and Marilyn activate your video so that we can have a last photo. And it is Carlo who is smiling and Gaetano who will make this photo. <laughs> and then we can close the meeting. Florence, Fatih, Rose, Sumia, Marilyn, please activate your video. Sorry. Stefan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Let me thank you, all the organizers. You, of course, Stefan and Anning uh, and everyone, Jackie, everyone, also Massimiliano that is supporting. And we know very well the hard work that is behind these five mornings. And uh, it was a very good pleasure for us to to support and uh, promote this event. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And I did, I didn't mention Massimiliano, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Gaetano, we didn't hear you. Gaetano. Accendi, accendi il microfono. Devo ripetere, accendi il microfono. And he wants to speak with you. Please, Annie. I just said I couldn't really understand what you said because there was a... I just asked to follow our activity on the website and Agora. Uh, on the landing page of these uh, five uh, Good Morning uh, Stakeholder Forum, you can find uh, all the material developed uh, during the last uh, meetings. Stay tuned with the LEAP4 FNSSC project. Great. Thank Thanks okay. a lot. Thank you so much. Have all a lovely afternoon and see you soon. Bye. Yeah. All Bye. the best for you. Bye. Bye. Bye.